Hi, you ever had one of those bad days when you just do something incredibly ugh, face palm stupid? Well, yeah, that just happened to me today. I was um, just checking the calibration of my little uh, microcurrent um, uh, test jig here. This is the one amp one. I've got several of these for different uh, current ranges and things. And this is the production test jig that goes along and, you know, bang, 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 bang. You put it in and uh, check the microcurrents in production. Um, this uh, I sent these to my uh, assembly house. I don't do them here, so they're the ones who operate this. And I've got a um, precision um, uh, current source that I've built. And uh, yeah, if you want to, I don't know. Have I shown inside this before? It's 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 not pretty. Um, there you go. It's not pretty, but there is a small board. Uh, down in there, which um, is pretty schmick, actually. It generates a really precision 1 amp um, current. So it may not look like much, but anyway, this generates the uh, current reference uh, for the microcurrent calibration. And I was just checking the calibration of this where I actually feed in uh, 1 volt into the um, input into this thing. So it simulates the 1 volt output from the microcurrent um, using my voltage reference here. and You'll notice that it's um, reasonably close to... I've just uh, switched this thing on. So let me plug it in and watch what happens. Oh, am I doing it again? No. Look, it's dropped down. There you go. Why is it dropped down um, from the nominal 1 volt? Well, obviously, the output of this voltage reference is being loaded. Why? Because I did something incredibly dumb. I hooked it up and I had my voltage reference set to 10 volts. Oh! And this thing is powered from, um, as you can see, two um, coin cell batteries. So there's like a maximum of a 6 volt uh, range on, you know, a 6 volt power supply on this thing. In fact, it's dropped a little bit um, down below that on the rail itself. And of course, oh! If you feed 10 volts into the input, in this case, the input uh, terminals here are connected directly to an op amp on here. And if you feed 10 volts in, when you've got a 6 volt rail, wah, and well, yeah, something's loading it down. So I think I've killed my input op amp here. And that's, you know, my dumb. I didn't ruggedize this thing. Um, like I would have normally did. I did a real hurry um, and I didn't put any input uh, input series protection resistors or anything, any input protection at all, any sort of clamping because it wasn't going to be ever used in a scenario where that was likely to be a problem except when it gets back in my hands and I completely screw my own little design by not check in before I plug the damn voltage reference in. Oh, unbelievable. So yeah, I think um, there's something seriously wrong with that chip and it's loading down my reference. Let's go measure it. And by the way, if you haven't um, seen this, it's just got a power LED in here and an in-spec LED, and that's basically it. It tells the production operator, go, no go, whether or not a microcurrent um, passes the test and well let's this is the voltage input here which takes the um, output from the microcurrent and when you feed in the nominal one amps uh, into the microcurrent this is just a uh, feed through like that so this just feeds whoop, feeds the current straight through like that so no big deal but, uh, obviously wah, <laughs> 60 ohms there you go that is why it's loading down my voltage <laughs> reference. I've definitely well and truly killed it. This is supposed to go just directly to the input of a um, you know, high precision um, CMOS op amp. So it should effectively be, you know, infinite input impedance basically. And nope, it's shorted out. So yeah. Oops. And it's going to be that puppy there, the OPA 2376. So it takes the input uh, directly from there, and um, just a, it's it's a window comparator. So it uh, drives the uh, lead there from a voltage reference on the board. So you know it's a fairly simple device, but yeah, I had no input protection or anything like that. Oh.
suck out the chip and, well, I hope I've got another one. I usually buy more than what I need. You know, if I if I was building one of these, I wouldn't just order one op amp, um, you know, because I would have got it from DigiKey or maybe, you know, someone like that. I would have ordered at least a couple of spares. Go on, Ski. And a little bit of clean up there. And she'll be right, ready for a new one. Okay, so make sure dumbass me's got it around the right way. I think I have. I've already uh, tacked down one corner pin. And in this case, it was unlikely to have uh, taken out anything else on the supply rail. And I checked the voltage uh, reference on here. It seems to be working just fine. And the other op amp on here, um, its functionality is just fine. So there's only basically three main uh, devices on the rail here. And sure enough, Ta-da! I'm not sure if you can see that, but anyway, a green light, it's um, in spec, and I can now go out of spec and make it jump in and out of spec, and now I can go in and tweak it. It takes actually quite some um, time to actually re-check um, and recalibrate this thing, but there you go, it's fixed. So, dumbass me. What's the moral of the story? Why did I do this video? I don't know. I just wanted to share my screw-up with you. So, before you plug stuff in, thou shall check voltages. Catch you next time.